and it's just basketball. At the end of the day, it's just basketball. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe on the way in the door, my people. I hope you all are having a truly, truly fantastic day today. Welcome back to Fanboy Friday. Fanboys, you probably think that you're having a good day today. <laughs> you, you probably think your day is going good. That's because you believe in any and everything that your king does. So you probably think this J.J. Reddick hire is a great hire. And if you read the title of the video, uh, it would infer that I have some excitement towards the hiring of J.J. Reddick. And let there be no mistake. <laughs> I'm very excited that they hired J.J. Reddick. <laughs> this is great news, everybody. This is fantastic news. This means that next year is going to be full of unlimited content. It's not going to end. So to me, this they have made the official first step into making the Los Angeles Lakers the greatest show on earth. The greatest clown show on earth. The only other step left is to hire Bronny, is to uh, draft Bronny James. And then it will be complete. Then we will have all the ingredients for uh, uh, next season full of entertainment, full of the <laughs> indefensible, uh, full of, of uh, foolery. Just just everything that makes for a great soap opera. Uh, so, yes, J.J. Reddick has officially been hired as the coach of the Los Angeles Lakers. And, uh, you know, just looking over the last few seasons with LeBron James and, you know, his just his stint with the Lakers in general, I think this is the perfect way for him to end it because he came in uh, immediately destroying the Lakers franchise, you know. Uh, I mean, think about what he's done since he got here. He he had the Lakers trade away their future <laughs> of of young players, you know, as they were rebuilding for the future. LeBron James comes in and gets them to trade away their future. Uh, he gets them to get Anthony Davis. They win the 2020 bubble ring which most people uh, view as worthless, including myself. Um, you know, they've had Vogel. Uh, they've had Darvin Ham. And, and now we're at J.J. Redick. Uh, oh, let's not forget that they won the in-season tournament. <laughs> Don't forget that. <laughs> so, yeah, th this is the completion of... Finishing off the Lakers franchise, uh, Lakers fans, at this point, you got to laugh. At this point, you just have to laugh. And, you know, a lot of people watch this channel and probably wonder why I laugh so much. And that is because you have to laugh at the things you can't control. We, as the NBA fan base, we, as the people who once truly, uh, had a vested interest in not just players, but teams. If you had a team, you were a ride or die with that team because the NBA once cared about the fan base. That is no longer the case. So you just have to laugh because you have no control over it. There is nothing we can do uh, to prevent the path that the NBA is going down. So you just have to laugh at it. You, you have to look at the positives. And like I said, the positive is, is that J.J. Reddick is the first component uh, officially of making next year uh, highly entertaining, like plenty of content. Um, so, yeah, you know, it, it's uh, now that, well, since the Lakers have been looking for a new head coach, you know, everybody has kind of put this two and two together about. The whole reason behind LeBron James and J.J. Reddick podcast, you know, again, they <laughs> they started the podcast on deception, saying that they just wanted to have a podcast where people talk about 
basketball and LeBron James was on interviews talking about he's tired of people talking about the, all the narratives and comparisons and yada, yada, yada. They just want a podcast where it's just about the game. And right away, we could see that it was not just about the game. It was about uh, narratives and LeBron trying to rewrite history on some of his biggest failures. However, uh, what it also turned out to be is a look into the fact that LeBron wanted J.J. Reddick to be the coach. You know, they were going through all these plays and technical terms of basketball and talking about this and talking about that. And and then next thing you know, you know, uh, during the season, we see that LeBron James and the Lakers clearly have disengaged from Darvin Ham. And, uh, you know, and the next thing you know, J.J. Reddick is in contention to be the Lakers' next head coach. Now, I think this is going to fail miserably. First of all, let me say this. Uh, yeah, J.J. Reddick is the next head coach. Wink, wink. Uh, also, uh, also known as LeBron James is the next head coach. To me, this is what this is going to be. <laughs> this is going to be LeBron James pretty much being the next head coach. Now, it's going to be interesting because you have two know-it-alls on the same team. That's going to be interesting. But why I think it is going to be fa failed, because just the things I've heard them say on their podcast, I've heard both of them say a lot of things uh, that I think shows not only just a lack of logic, but again, lack of instincts for the game. I've heard LeBron James say that, uh, I don't understand why you just don't always switch. You, you should always switch on the screen. I've, I've heard him say that. And to me, when I hear people say, you should always do something in a basketball game, I become suspect. You know, there are certain things you should always do. LeBron James, you should always play defense. <laughs> you should always hustle. <laughs> Those are things you should always do. But as far in terms of playmaking, to say things that you should always do, to me, when I hear people say like, say that to me it lets me know that you're a know-it-all that you're a know-it-all and which lets me know that you really don't know much at all because there are no to me scenarios as far as playing is concerned that should be always you shouldn't always switch on the screen it depends on who the person is with the ball it's the it depends on who the person is uh trying to get over the screen but not more importantly than that I think uh, unpredictability, that is really what makes you efficient, not only as a player, but as a team. Uh, and I'm going to have to go back and double check this, but I thought I heard, and I can't remember what Miami player it was, talking about that, you know, LeBron and, and Spolstra had some conflict over the whole switching of the screens thing. And, uh, you know, of course, because Spolstra, Spolster was backed by Pat Riley. Spolster got his way. But yeah, uh, to me, what really makes greatness is that unpredictability. Michael Jordan said uh, the thing that made his game what it was is the defense never knew what he might do. That That's how you maintain your advantage. It's, you know, sometimes you switch, sometimes you don't. You know, it depends on the player. It depends on how hot the player is. Again, it depends on... Uh, Who's trying to get through the screen? You know, some people are capable of going through those screens better than other people. And sometimes it's just about mixing it up. Uh, again, when uh, I think Jamal Mashburn, I did a video on this, and he was talking about how Jordan told him, was able to dissect his game and told him how to fix his game. And it said something like, you know, the, the uh, next few games or something, or a few games later, Jamal Mashburn had a 50-point game. And uh, it was due to, basically, Jordan gave him some advice about how to mix up how you score. It's not just about scoring. It is about how you score. And I say, I believe that applies to all facets of the game in basketball. It is that unpredictability that keeps the offense off balance. It's the unpredictability that keeps the defense off balance. So when you say stuff like you should always switch, uh, no, there's, there's nothing in basketball that you should always do. Again, 
Unless we're talking about defense, LeBron James. <laughs> Unless we're talking about hustling, LeBron James. <laughs> Those are things you should always do. So this is one reason why I think this is going to be an epic fail. Now, another reason is because uh, hopefully most of you saw my video earlier. It's the longest video I've done, hour-long video, talking about reasons LeBron James is one of the most disliked players uh, in the history of sports. And uh, one of those reasons was the uh, go back to your miserable lives comment. And uh, the reason I say this is because to me, this is very indicative of his mindset. Again, to me, what that comment said was, I'm rich, I'm gonna be rich tomorrow, and I'm richer than you. Again, you know, a lot of the talking points that we hear his fanboys say in the comments, again, which is why I say, hey, you ridiculous fanboys of LeBron James, I am talking to you if you are listening to this, and I'm sure you are because the, you love pain, uh, but you're a reflection of your king. This is why you say this stuff. Because you're a reflection of LeBron James. And that mentality of money justifies everything. I'm rich. I'm going to be rich tomorrow. And you got to go back to your life. To me, that is indicative that a person like that really can't be a good friend. If that's your mindset, you really don't have the traits to be a good friend. The characteristics to be the character to be a good friend. Truly. to say, it's like you're, you're a friend as long as things are going your way and we've seen this with Kendrick Perkins with him unfollowing Kendrick Perkins again Kendrick Perkins said that he had Rich Paul call him and again it's like if you've been friends as long as Kendrick Perkins say they've been friends and you can't take the time to pick up the phone and say hey Kendrick Perkins I disagree with you saying this or you send Rich Paul to do it well again to me that is a serious character flaw so uh like I said, to me, LeBron James probably, you know, we can't say anything definitively, but most likely does not have character to be a good friend. And I say that to say this. We're going to see what this friendship is really like when things start going awry. <laughs> we are going to see what things are really like. How their friendship holds up when things start going awry and LeBron James does what LeBron James has always done. And that is point the finger at somebody else. If the Lakers season gets off to a horrible start, uh, we already know who is the scapegoat. If the Lakers season gets off to a great start, we already know who's going to get the credit. It's going to be about a uh, 40-year-old LeBron James carrying the team. If the Lakers get off to a great start and they're praising LeBron and then they hit a slump, we already know who's going to get the blame. It's going to be J.J. Reddick. And what's going to be curious to see is how their friendship, uh, in quotes, holds up against this. What's also going to be curious to see is how to know it all gets know-it-alls get along <laughs> how to know-it-alls get along i mean just the fact that jj reddick disrespects past era so much number one what that tells me is that again you don't know anything about the fundamentals of the game i mean i feel like just listen to the podcast uh listen to the podcast and you will see two people who don't know anything about the fundamentals of the game Again, I've said this before. The things that has made successful teams uh, from the beginning is still the same things to this day that makes teams successful. And that is exploiting the weaknesses of the other teams on both offense and defense and playing good team ball and having great play individual players. Again, basketball is both a uh, team game and an individual game. It is not just a team game like this narrative they keep trying to sell you uh, through the media to dis to diminish championships. This is what they do. It's like, oh, well, championships is a, is a team accomplishment, so we can't give Jordan credit for that. <laughs> well, if it's a team accomplishment, well, LeBron James doesn't get credit for it either. <laughs> what are you talking about? But yeah, it is more than just, it is a team game and it is an individual game, both. 
You have to have both. You have to have a great team concept and a great individual and both feed into each other. Again, the Bulls are 6-0 and because they had the greatest player on earth and that greatest player was coachable and bought into the team concept. It is both. And let me also say this about LeBron James, who they try to say make his teammates better. LeBron James is not a team player. LeBron James is an individual player who stats pad by making sure he has a certain amount of points and making sure he has a certain amount of assists. He only can play within the system, which uh, to the uh, to the people who have been duped by these narratives would make you think that LeBron James is a team player. But again, talk to J.R. Smith about who gets the blame. <laughs> talk to J.R. Smith about who gets the blame when things are not going right? Look, uh, J.R. Smith said on an interview on the Bomani Jones show that when you're playing with a LeBron, it's about who didn't help him win. So, yeah, uh, we're going to see this friendship truly tested between two know-it-alls and one person who has a history of blaming everybody for his failures, we're going to see can they survive that? Can J.J. Reddick, more importantly, survive that? And which, you know, th this is going to be so satisfying for me. I, I hate to say this, but this is going to be so satisfying when J.J. Reddick uh, gets the blame for this because I think he deserves it for all the stuff he said about past players. You reap what you sow. <laughs> you, you're so great. You you better come into this job and do a phenomenal job right away. <laughs> you don't get any grace period. You better do a phenomenal job right away. But anyway, <laughs> we are going to hold up here. Uh, so I was watching, I can't remember, it might have been ESPN, and they were showing J.J. Reddick uh, walking down the hallway, I guess uh, maybe at a Lakers building or something, and they were talking about him getting ready to start hiring his coaching staff and whatnot. And I could not help but just, it, it made me smile. Like I said, you know, I know a lot of Lakers fans, you you guys probably think this is the end of the world, and it probably is the end of your franchise. I, I, but like I said, uh, you can't control it. It's out of your control, so you got to laugh, and you really just got to appreciate the content that is going to come from it. Like I said, I I know for one that I am very uh, looking forward to seeing the many content creators uh, <laughs> comment on all the things that will be taking place next year. Uh, <laughs> shout out to Sports and Fitness Rants. Shout out to Angry Old Hoops. Shout out to Michael Jordan fans are the best. Shout out to Phenomenal Fitness. Uh, shout out to D. Allen Ricks TV. Shout out to Ticket TV. Uh, to Raw. Shout out to uh, Re Retro Heat Check. Uh, shout out to Uncut Hoops. Shout out to all the content creators, if I missed anybody, uh, who will no doubt uh, have more than enough content for next basketball season. Like I said, this is step one or two. Uh, everybody, just keep your fingers crossed, and hopefully... Hopefully, the Lakers will definitely draft Bronny James. I hate that Bronny has to be a part of this, but but he is, and, you know, it's going to be what it is. Um, so, yeah, hopefully the Lakers draft Bronny James because then it will be complete. Then the Lakers, like I said, they will have a full-on circus, and, man, I'm, I'm just really, like I said, I just can't imagine... <laughs> The, the things that will be going on next season. I mean, it's just going to be incredible. So anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments. What do you think about J.J. Reddick, uh, uh, future plumber coach, <laughs> being hired to be the coach of the Lakers? Uh, do you think the whole podcast thing was some sort of ploy to help facilitate this? Uh, do you think uh, LeBron James and J.J. Riddick's friendship <laughs> will survive this? Or do you think at the end they will become bitter enemies and maybe J.J. Reddick will join Kendrick Perkins? <laughs> uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. You all have a truly, truly fantastic day. <laughs>
and I'll see you next time. All right.